Okay, um, so uh, welcome back to this uh, next video on uh, mitosis. So, okay, we're in the process of discussing how uh, you get a positive feedback in the rise of MCDK at um, the start of uh, the M phase of the cell cycle. So at the start of the M phase of the cell cycle, the levels of this active uh, MCDK go up. And remember, an active MCDK uh, is a um, CDK1 enzyme here, bound with cyclin B, and also with this activatory phosphate group here. Okay, now, so if the, if the level of this goes up by a little amount, what it's going to do is it's going to trigger the level to go up even more, basically. So it's going to have a positive feedback, which is how you get such a rapid rise in it. Okay, right. So, the way in which it has a positive feedback effect is that once this enzyme is active, once this MCDK is active, or this cyclin BCDK1 complex is active, it's going to phosphorylate uh, an enzyme known as CDC20. Um, so the, oh, sorry, no, CDC25 rather than CDC20. CDC20 is coming up later. So, it's going to phosphorylate this enzyme CDC25. Okay, so this is CDC25. Right, and CDC25 is a phosphatase enzyme. It removes phosphate groups from things. And in particular, what this CDC25 is going to do is it is going to go to the huge stock of inactive MCDK that you have over here, which is um, uh, MCDK with both the activatory and inhibitory phosphate groups. So there are two ways that you can have uh, MCDK or cyclin B CDK1 complexes inactive. Either they can have no phosphate groups on or they can have too many phosphate groups on and a lot of them are in this state here where they have both phosphate groups on. So it's going to go to these, phos uh, to these MCDK uh, enzymes which have both phosphate groups on and it's going to catalyze the removal of that inhibitory phosphate. So it's going to remove that inhibitory phosphate specifically. So what you're therefore going to get is um, CDK1 enzymes with their cyclin Bs attached and also with this activatory phosphate group here, which is an active CDK, basically. So here we have our active CDKs, and that is how producing some active CDK then means that you produce lots more. So you get a positive feedback loop where um, producing a bit of active CDK means that you produce a lot more. So CDK, um, CDK1, uh, sorry, cyclin B CDK1 complexes are going to go up very rapidly at the start of mitosis. So now let's actually discuss the process of mitosis and how this um, cyclin B CDK complex, uh, CDK1 complex, is so important in um, driving mitosis. Okay, right. So the first stage of mitosis then uh, is known as prophase. Okay, so mitosis, the phases of mitosis are split into uh, many different stages, and we're going to go through them one by one. So the first stage of mitosis is known as prophase. Now, in prophase, two things that are important happen, and they are both caused uh, by the rise in this M CDK, which is active. So the rise in the cyclin B CDK4 complex, CDK1, sorry, complex, cyclin B CDK1 here. Okay, so this is going to trigger prophase, basically. And the two things which happen, so I'll draw a cell going from um, not being in prophase, i.e. being in the G2 phase, to going into prophase. So initially, Here's the nucleus, and basically all of the DNA is just spread out in chromatin, basically. So you've not got chromosomes formed, is the important thing. Also, uh, the microtubules are just forming part of the cytoskeleton at the moment. So microtubules, which I'll have to denote in a different colour from the uh, ch chromatin, uh, they again are just not ordered. They're forming the cytoskeleton. They're important in the cytoskeleton. Now... 
So what's going to happen in prophase is firstly you get the formation of the mitotic spindles where you start to get the formation of the mitotic spindles which are the microtubules are going to take on very specific structures that are going to help you basically pull the um, pull the nucleus apart in a way okay and those are called the mitotic spindles in addition the chromosomes are going to start um, condensing basically and forming those um, structures that if you type in chromosomes on Google you will actually see. The reality is that those pictures, those are not what the cell usually, the nucleus of the cell usually looks like. If you look into the nucleus of a cell you will not see 46 little structures just like those ones that you see on Google. No, instead you'll see a tangled mass known as chromatin. Okay, the chromosomes only form those condensed, beautiful structures that you can see pictures of on Google that look like this, basically. Okay, they only form those structures when they are about to um, enter mitosis, well, when they're going through mitosis, basically, they form these structures. So, that is why uh, you very rarely see uh, chromosomes in this structure. Instead, you often see them in this X structure. But this X structure is not just one chromosome. This is a pair of sister chromatids. Okay, so remember, in our, um, in our normal undividing cells, there are 46 chromosomes. So, 46 chromosomes. So, let's draw them here. So, let's say these are the chromosomes here. So, there are 46. And of those 46... The, you have basically pairs in there, pairs of homologous chromosomes. So let's say these are the chromosome 1s, these are the chromosome 2s, etc. And you'd go all the way down to chromosome 23. Uh, well, chromosome 23 is the sex chromosome, so that will be a bit more complicated. You either have XX or XY. Okay, uh, but the point is that these are homologous chromosomes, so they have the same genes on them but they're not necessarily genetically identical, so they may well differ in uh, which gene, which alleles of each gene they have, and they're certainly going to differ on their uh, actual, um, actual uh, organic base um, sequences. Okay, right. Now, uh, when you copy the DNA, when you replicate the DNA, what happens is that each of these chromosomes is going to be completely copied, and when they condense in this first phase of mitosis, they are completely copied, basically. So you don't see them appearing like this. Instead, you see these X's appearing, which are basically two of these identical chromosomes uh, whole held together at what's known as a centromere. So this happens for each of the homologous chromosomes, basically. So the two chromosome ones will both take on this function because I got very confused about this when I was 15 and learning this for the first time. I thought this X structure was the two homologous chromosomes stuck together at the centromere, but it is not the two homologous chromosomes. It is the two sister chromatids which are copies of each other. One is a copy of the other. They are absolutely identical and they're held together at the moment. So you're going to have 23 pairs of these sister chroma chromatids, basically. So at the moment, you actually have 46 times 2 chromosomes in the cell. Uh, so um, uh, 92 chromosomes. Okay, right. So now that I've got that um, point off my chest, um, so basically, when, um, when the chromosomes actually condense in this first phase of mitosis, what they're going to look like is you're going to have 46 of these X structures, which are these two sister chromatids linked together. And that's why if you type in on Google pictures of chromosomes, it won't generally, generally show you this picture because this picture is incredibly rare and incredibly difficult to get because the way they take pictures of the chromosomes are they take pictures of them when they're condensed and they're only condensed when they're in mitosis so when you see them condensed they're going to be in this sister chromatid form rather than in this um, in this um, singleton form, basically. So that's why when you type in on Google pictures of chromosomes, they will show you pictures of the sister chromatids rather than pictures of the single chromosomes um, because it's the easier way of taking photos of the condensed chromosomes uh, because 
when they're in mitosis, they're going to be in the uh, cystochromative form. And if you want to see them in this form, you have to get a very narrow, there's a very narrow window in the cell cycle where you would actually be able to take a photo of them in this form. Uh, and it's when the, two, when the cell has divided into two and the chromosomes are now separated, the cystochromatids have been pulled apart, but they are still condensed. Okay, right. So, what's going to happen is this chromatin is going to start condensing, and you're going to get these 46 sister chromatids, basically, or these 23 pairs of homologous sister chromatids. Right, so, uh, and also in prophase, you're also going to get the, uh, the mitotic spindles forming. So, chromos the chromosomes are going to condense. That's one of the major things that happens in... Um, in a prophase of mitosis. And secondly, the mitotic spindles are going to form. That's the second major thing that happens in a prophase of mitosis. Right, and both of these processes are driven by the MCDK, by the cyclin B CDK1 complexes. So this causes the chromosomes to condense and it causes the microtubules to form. So let me show you a cell having actually formed the microtubules and having actually condensed its chromosomes. Okay, so in the nucleus, you're going to have these 23 pairs of homologous chromat oh, sorry, of homologous sister chromatids. So you're going to have these X's like this. So I should draw them really like that rather than as an actual X. Okay, so you're going to have all of that going on all the way down to 23 of them. And they're not going to have yet aligned in this beautiful way. It's just to show it nicely that I've done that. And then you've also got these mitotic spindles dividing, which ha have basically a pot. You're, sorry, you've also got these mitotic spindles forming, uh, which basically have what's known as a spindle pole right at the center, and then they have these sort of extensions, these sort of fibers facing in towards the nucleus, and this is going to form the basis of how you're going to pull the sister chromatids apart, basically. So you've got these sort of hubs at the center, which are known as mitotic poles or spindle poles. So this is a spindle pole, and it, it, when I'm saying pole, I'm meaning pole in the sense of like polarity, like the North Pole, the South Pole. It's the two poles of the cell. That's why they're called spindle poles, not like a, uh, you know, a, a stick sort of a pole. Um, okay, right, so we've got these spindles forming, or, or these mitotic spindles forming, which are all attached to these two mitotic poles, and you've got one mitotic pole at one side of the cell, and the other uh, spindle pole at the other side of the cell, and spindle pole, mitotic pole, whatever you want to call it, mitotic spindle. Okay, so uh, this is where the, the cell is now going to divide along this axis, because the uh, two spindle poles are going to pull the cell in that sort of way, basically. Okay, uh, so that's what happens in prophase of mitosis. Uh, we'll cut this video here and continue the story in the next video.